Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Where is God in the midst of COVID-19? What is going to happen? Hello and welcome to Hope Spot on Shalom World. I'm your host, Robert Fiducia, from Nashville, Tennessee, in the United States. And Hope Spot is designed to give you hope and insight for living during this time of global pandemic. And today's topic goes to the very heart of why we wanted to provide Hope Spot in the first place. And it is to explore the question of where is God in the midst of this global pandemic? And so to help us to answer that question and to receive insight into this time, we have joining us from Rome, the Superior General of the Claritian Missionaries, Father Matthew Vadabottom. Father Matthew, welcome to the show. It is an honor to have you with us. Thank you. And also joining us from Ireland is the Primate of all of Ireland, Northern Ireland and the Republic. Archbishop Eamon Martin, who is the Archbishop of Armagh in Ireland. Your Grace, it's an honor to have you with us today. Hello, everyone. Great to be with you. So, Your Grace, I'd like to to begin with you. Um, I, I had a conversation with a with a friend a few years ago, who was really facing a lot of despair, and I, I really appreciated how forthcoming he was. Through tears, he had said, "I wonder if God even cares about me anymore, or knows that I'm even going through this." And I think that question is faced, um, has faced a lot of people. What, what do you say to someone who is in the midst of this pandemic, wondering if God is indifferent, wondering if God even cares about us now? Immediately, it brings to mind the uh, beautiful psalm about the Lord being our shepherd. And even though we might be walking in the valley of darkness, that the Lord is there with us, even in those moments of darkness and tears and fears, it's so important to realize that we are not alone. I remember the Holy Father, Pope Francis, in that very moving Urbi at Orbi address that he gave us uh, shortly after the pandemic really began to rage, where he drew attention to that moment during the calming of the storm where Jesus appeared to be asleep. And the disciples turned to him and said, more or less as if, like your friend, to say, do you not care? You know, why are you sleeping? And his message is, oh, oh man of little faith, you know, why did you doubt? And I'm so conscious that, you know, we've just come through um, almost all of Lent and the entirety of the Easter season. And we've been walking through this pandemic through the time in the church when we reflect on suffering and death and the passion of our Lord on the cross, but also through that time when we, we celebrate his resurrection from the dead. So we have this whole mix of emotions but I think what's so important is to realize that despite the darkness, despite the fears, that the Lord is at our side, even though sometimes we, we find it difficult to realize that that's only human. And it's, it's, it's real, very much part of our faith uh, to, to be open to our fears and to be open to our anxieties and that sense of emptiness, but always realizing the Lord is risen. The Lord is beside us. He walks by our side. Mm -hmm. Father Matthew, if I could go to you with this. I was watching um, a beautiful movie, uh, Romero, which is about St. Oscar Romero. And just as a missionary, uh, even though he was not a missionary, I, I feel he really had a missionary spirit about him. But as he looked at the suffering of the people there in Central America, he had cried out in this one scene that Christ is being crucified in those who are suffering, in his brothers and sisters. So we, we, we just heard his grace talk about how the Lord is not asleep in the boat and that we, have, uh, we are to have faith in this. Could you explain the, just that theology about the crucified Christ being with those who are suffering? 
Mm -hmm. I will start uh, with the grace, same question of where is God? No? Because all of us at one time, we need to ask that question. No? I myself asked it together with the Psalm 115 and uh, 42, where is God amidst suffering? Until we find uh, in Christ, God is fully present you know, in the lockdown, with the doctors, with the patients, in our own personal story. That presence of God in the suffering, which we discover in Jesus. Uh, I, and for me, in my own personal journey, that was a big discovery. And Jesus on crying on the cross, you know, why did you forsake me? He articulating this human cry, which uh, now with that, when we look at people now in this pandemic situations, and many of my own brothers who suffered, uh, we have more than 20 people who suffered, one of them died. And we share this uh, suffering. What strike me is many of them, those who come, came out of it, they say in, in health or in, in suffering, Jesus is there with me, with us. So discovering uh, God with us because Jesus made our own or his own, what we go through. That discovery of God with us, Emmanuel, is a key. How does it explain? You know, one thing One thing is presence with the people through prayer in our own community. Now I, I can see the difference. Every day we have half an hour adoration for the suffering world. Then our own participation in the conducts where we are in Rome, we have been trying to also participate some efforts. But more than that, you know, in some parts of the world, the famine was more acute than the death. Millions of people on travels in Indian context. And, and the presence of God is in, in the love shared. Some of our brothers together with other religious and even interconnecting with Hong Kong, Macau, etc., distributing food. In one case, they have distributed food for 15,000 families. They were caught up. And uh, one of the congregations distributed about 45,000 meals. You know. this, uh, this is where God is present. You know. And so the whole definition of a God who is in the sky, watching and man managing or even manipulating human beings, here is a God who is with us, where there is love. And that is the challenge to discover God in the midst of what we go through as love that binds us. Now, I want to continue in, down this line, if I, if I could, um, because I, I, I know that one of the beauties of the human experience, it, it's these moments of, of contact with, with God, contact with the divine, real encounters. So I was talking to, to a friend of mine very recently who had been to the Holy Land, and God felt so present. But then came home, and uh, this this young woman is a is a nurse, and in the face of working at the COVID unit, she just did not feel God anymore. So, Father Matthew, I would like to go to you first, but then also your grace. I'd like for you to to answer this as well. Why is that the case? That there are moments in life where we do feel God is so very close, so very present. And then there are times where it feels like our prayers are going no farther than the breath that we have. Father Matthew, why, why do we experience that as humans? One of the things that uh, stood out very strong in this uh, pandemic time is connectedness. Everything is connected. Relationship. I was saying to my brothers, we may be keeping physical distance, but physical communion. Now, speaking of God's presence and absence, how do we know? I think through the, our own relationship experiences. Think of your, you know, my own or your own relationship with your dad or mom. According to our own changing moods, we may see them present or absent. You know, sometimes children shout at mother, you don't love me or you know, as if she is not there. But we, in truth, we know that she is there for the child. So speaking from the human experience of ups and downs, moods and moods out, we may experience closeness and distance. But from the perspective of God, who is love, He is there. And, and what links that is faith. That's why I think even in the worst times, I, in my own life, of my own experience, the difficult times, 
but deep down we know that god is there and to handle no i don't know everything but you are there makes a big difference and if for me that is a beauty of our christian faith we can experience in the darkness or in the absence presence because god is present how to translate i think the in the journey of faith everyone makes you know discovers the depth of god's love and uh, we learn to manage our difficult times and the beauty of a journey christian journey is that to navigate in different moments of our life this affirmation that god is life and love so you grace if if you were talking to that friend of mine who obviously feels the lord's presence in the holy land but then goes to a covid unit and just feels god being completely absent what would you offer to her i think it's really important for all of us to realize that the world we are living in is not the perfect place we are in exile from our heavenly home um we describe this world from time to time as being like a valley of tears and there is so much suffering and indeed so much evil in the world and yet in the midst of all of that we get glimpses we get glimpses of the transcendent we get revelations of god's love and goodness and kindness and during this covid-19 pandemic and um, there are so many examples of um terrible suffering i i think in particular of of parishioners here who have not been able to have the proper funeral they've not been able to have their loved ones by their bedside as they died and yet there has been such an outpouring of goodness and kindness to all sorts of families i think of young people in the middle of their exam time who are giving up a, a lot of their own pleasures to to bring messages and resources to the elderly and those who are living alone i think of nurses one young nurse who came to me she said i've been 5 years as a nurse and only now i'm realizing it is my vocation from god and she she has to put on all of this ppe every day masks and gloves and in the midst of all of that she's feeling god's call and let me give you not one other beautiful story it begins with a very tragic situation of a young mother who made contact with me through a friend asking for a blessing she was pregnant and in her final weeks of pregnancy and she was terribly down because her father paddy uh was dying of covid-19 and she couldn't go to him she couldn't go to him because she was pregnant as she couldn't be with him she did call, talk to him over the phone and tell him that she loved him and uh, sadly he did die but just the other night she and her husband arrived here at my door asking for a blessing for baby patrick uh, and uh, this is the little baby now born she has given him her father's name and i said to her your father just as your father through god's mercy is being born into eternal life little patty little patrick is being born into this life and i think that there are so many beautiful examples like this of people who in the midst of the despair in the midst of the darkness like your friend are getting glimpses of god's love and charity and goodness reminders to us that we are on a pilgrimage through this life we will not find joy and complete happiness until we are with god in heaven but he gives us moments where we can see what that will that beautiful life will be like with him so your grace i'd like to go back to you you had uh, earlier in the show mentioned about that beautiful orbi at orbi address from the holy father in that beautiful time of prayer where i i really do believe that he had given to the church uh, the the parable or not the parable the story about the calming of the storm as something to guide us through this through this time and and so uh, that that feeling of of god being absent of the lord being a, a asleep at the at the boat when our prayers feel like that they're not being heard um help us to understand that what what is the lord doing when we're asking for something and those prayers aren't being answered exactly that moment of the erbi at orbi message uh, not only did we have the the beautiful illustration from scripture by pope francis of the calming and the storm story but the whole scene was one of emptiness there he was 
in the midst of a square that we associate with huge crowds. And there was a silence and an emptiness. And I feel that a lot of people have gone through that moment or those feelings over the course of this pandemic, that sense of the absence of God, the the absence of something. And uh, it is true that if, if you feel that the, how the disciples on the road to Amos felt, for example, as well, and they were walking along, their faces downcast, not knowing how to feel. I mean, their hopes had been that, that Jesus was the one, and they didn't even realise that he was walking by their side. They only recognised him at the breaking of the bread, And I think that it says something to us also about the absence of being together for Eucharist. I think that is emphasizing and multiplying our sense of absence. And I feel that pain of a lot of our parishioners here who say, when can we get back uh, to Mass and the sacraments? Uh, And in various parts of the world, here in Ireland, both North and South, we still are not able to gather for collective worship and for the Mass. And and that multiplies, as I say, that sense of absence. But all through the Scriptures, all through the Psalms, and in many of our most beautiful prayers, there are those pleading prayers uh, that God will be with us when we feel that emptiness and that silence. And and again, the most beautiful prayer to to Mary uh, in the Hail Holy Queen, the Salve Regina, Mm -hmm. uh, to thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. We send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. You will find, and as people pray their traditional prayers during this time, they will be able to tune in to the to the human collective sense of absence and of emptiness and of silence that has been there down through the centuries and right through the ages when people cry out, my Lord, where are you? I need you. And yet he's walking right by our side. If <clears throat> only our eyes could be opened at those moments. Well, thank you, Your Grace. Uh, Father Matthew, now if I could go to you, still looking at at the story of Jesus in the boat with the disciples and being asleep, and he asked the question, did you have no faith? So my question to you, Father Matthew, is what is or what should be our response in faith when we are in in this place? And the Lord is trying to give us comfort, but what is our response? What's our proper response, Father? I think one of the beautiful thing I experienced this year is collectively live as a church that Holy Week. And a particular moment of that was that that prayer with the Pope, no? symbolically, that was it. No? And living through the Holy Week and then, you know, Pentecost Sunday, Pope coming to the window and praying no? that the Spirit is in us. The whole journey this year was unprecedented for me. It was a faith journey. And I believe that is the answer. How to live together, carrying the cross together, knowing that the Lord is there with us and as a church. No? Chesterton seems to have said no, that God murmurs in our pleasures. He speaks to our conscience and he shouts at our pain. And it is when we have pain, we even ask the question, where is God? You were also asking that question. And how do we find it? We find also that now God is actually with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. I, and it is here, I think, we human beings who do a lot of brain work, you know, with the mind ruminating, leaving the heart alone. It is the heart that perceives what even our mind cannot comprehend. For me, this period has been a the silence, this connecting with people was so that question seemed to be a question coming from outside, not the real question. Even Jesus did not give a discourse on suffering and so on. He just showed us what we were doing. Try everything to alleviate the pain of others. When the pain comes to us, embrace it with a with this faith, knowing that God is with us. And knowing that we are not physically eternal here, our real home is there. So for me, together as a church, we have been 
tangibly experiencing the mystery of Christ and knowing that he is there no he is there and now the holy spirit who dwells in us leads us so we don't know how to you know fabricate anything we need only to learn to walk walk in the spirit mm. your grace final question to you just in the time that we have have remaining does prayer change god or does prayer change us i hope the prayer helps to change us I think that in our conversations with God through prayer we begin to become more open to questions in our own lives. I'd like to see this time of pandemic as a moment for conversion, a moment that speaks to our hearts. And one of the ways of course of being able to do that is to open up our hearts to God in prayer. I feel already people are saying to me that this time of uh, almost seclusion in some cases uh, uh, I know it has been described by various commentators as uh, an imposed monasticism where where we are we are we are locked down in our in our homes in our in our rooms and in that sense we're open to God's promptings through prayer and and I really do feel that this time of additional prayer will be a time that changes us and opens us up perhaps to question some of the values that we have in our lives i i said to someone the other day do you think you'll go back to precisely the same way as you were before all of this happened and his answer was very honest he says i hope not i hope i'm changed mm. through this and i hope i'm changed for the better I'm more aware of the suffering of the vulnerable. I'm more aware of the things in my life that I take so for granted like my family, my close friends who have kept in touch with me over social media and over the telephone. I'm more aware of health services, I'm more aware of access to clean water. I'm more conscious of people in the world who are suffering and who are marginalized. I hope I've been changed through this. What's his answer? and i hope the same and i hope the same for our viewers and listeners today through being open in prayer to that conversation allow god to change you so that when it's all over you've come through it but as a better person mm. his grace archbishop amen martin thank you very much for joining us today thank you it's been great being with you And Father Matthew Vadabottom, thank you so much. Your insights were were just impeccable. Thank you very much. I enjoyed being with you all. Thank you. And our viewers, I was very struck by just going back to the story of Jesus in the boat that our Holy Father presented to us that the Lord is there and that as we pray and reach out in faith, we respond more to what he is doing within us and within the church and within the world. We ask you to come to shalomworld.org for more content and also download our app. Thank you very much for joining us once again. We'll be with you right here next time at Hope Spot on Shalom World. To all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you.